what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! One in front, scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. With our lads. Fala, my man. Woo. How we doing? I got a little lip over here. <laughs> you need a little bit more than the lip bloomers today, I think. Hey, buddy, it's called ludicrous. Is there a little what? caffeine in there? No, I've had like three coffees this morning. Swam in one, almost yeah. drowned in that pool. Thank God I was in the, thank God I was in the <laughs> Bay Club pool, and not the big canyon pool where there's a deep end. But ludicrous lemon flavor. Never had this one. Well, just try it up and then toss it. Give it a little sauce pass over, fella. Um. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you there. I, I thought I was on your flight home from, Ve- from Vegas, but you ducked out early on the boys. I did. I when, did. When did you well, the best it? thing about this JSX, bud, usually I have sauce pass. Yeah. Usually uh, JSX, for those of you out there, a little private aviation uh, tickets are usually expensive <laughs> to get to Vegas from a little private trip. aviation. No, but they are. They're usually like, you know, eight, nine hundred bucks. Yeah, that's what mine was round trip. Yeah, mine was like 800 total. And then I had a little bit of the guilt going this morning. I know it's a useless, uh, useless emotion for those of you out there who are wondering. Um, and I just, you know, it was really early. It was really early yeah. Saturday. And uh, I was feeling it a little bit from, from Christina. You know, she's like, our nanny couldn't come over. And guys out there who deal with that, they know what I mean. <laughs> and so I just was like, you know what? There's two earlier flights. You know, I can, I can make the 10. So I made the 10.30, I got home by noon, that must and nice. she got to go out with her girls. I took the kids, it was actually great, I took the kids to, uh, I took them to breakfast, my favorite breakfast spot with them at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw loaded it up on the coffees. And, your girl was at the Bay Club. I yeah, her, she I went to the Bay Club. A few, the, a few of the other Oh, Did you make it over there? House, I, I would you, they, they should have their own, why does not your girl do her own show in Orange County? I bet she, she they, hates Orange County. She hates Orange County. Why would she, she'd do a show anywhere else. Anywhere but Orange she'd County. Do, she'd do it in New York or in uh, Aspen for sure. She hates Orange County. She's got no friends here. Well, she was with like four girlfriends when I saw her there. Like oh, Stacy. Stacy's her friend. Ariel. And, uh, and God, she doesn't live here though. They had a couple other, they look like a pretty solid crew if you ask me. Were they not bad? Yeah, I mean, they, they look like they're having a nice time sitting on the patio at the bank. Yeah, good living. She, you know, good I living. think she just grew up here, so she's bored here. That's bored. that's the thing. Yeah, I can see that. Well, when you're used to living in uh, when you're used to living in New York and Aspen, this is definitely a, a slower pace, right? Like you're not going to go for dinner every night here. Or you're not going to. Yeah, that's that's just yeah. Uh, for you. Yeah, I guess for the people who are like her, it would be repetitious here, Groundhog Day. Yeah, which some of us don't mind, especially ah. if you're golfing. Teeing it yeah. up, and you're only an hour flight away from Vegas. There was a time when I first retired here that I was kind of like, ah, Newport's boring. You know, it's a little small. I may or may not have ran myself through it a little bit here, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, where am I going to go again? Like, I, Rothschild is my spot. I'd go with Frank because Frankie's the man. I go there, but then wouldn't really go to the Goose anymore because I felt like it was a younger crowd and I was getting in fights there. And then, you know, a restaurant <laughs> I suspended myself from. So I was like, well, ah, maybe it's time for a change of pace. And I'm glad I did because now for my lifestyle, Newport sure. is the best. For sure. Like, you know, up, up, get my swim in, golf with the boys, come and studio with you. I'm on the couch every night. By yeah, yeah, you're watching hockey. Fourth, totally. Three. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the most exciting life, but. I mean, it, it gives you some great content, fella. But you know what was, you know what was exciting? <laughs> Saturday. Saturday <laughs> with you and Loops. Listen, to, to the fellas out there. I'm sure you guys got some guys you play beer league with that you get to see on Wednesdays or whatever. Listen, I, I can't remember the last time that me, you, and Loops hung out, just us three. Yeah. And I told Mac Miller, um, and, you know, I actually I, I sent the video to Ariel of Loops in the number one creek there trying to get it out, and she just texts back, I'm so glad you three got to hang out together. And I was like, you know what, Ariel, I appreciate you saying that because we don't really get to do it very often anymore. For sure. And Mac Miller said the same thing. She's like, I'm glad you guys got to do it. Well, it was awesome. Shadow Creek, what a place, man. Yeah. What a track. Insane. I t- it's a top fiver for me. Listen, I've never been to Augusta, and you have. Maybe maybe if I'm way off here, tell me I'm way off. But when we went through that, the you know, Shadow Creek Drive, it was called, then those gates opened, I felt like that for that moment I was going down Magnolia Lane Yeah, with my two boys. You pull up. The clubhouse has that old school. It looked like, like white and green. It had an Augusta feel to it. Yeah, Nobody it there. No, it was very colonial. They had the green, yeah. the green awnings. Uh, one story clubhouse looked uh, like you know Steve Wynn back in the day, and and Tom Fazio. They did an incredible job with the vision, because there's just you know it, 
back then, and there's, I wish I showed you the photo. In the photo there at Shadow Creek, which is in Las Vegas, for those of you out there who, who may not have heard this, top 25 golf course in the world. It's such a treat. Used to be really hard to get onto. Now, if you're a big time player at MGM, they now own it. So you can get on there, but it's still like $1,500 rounds. It's yeah. not your typical Muni course. Um, oh. <laughs> so w- when you come in, <clears throat> you're in this fucking, it just, it was a dirt field before right? It's just desert. And then Steve Wynn had this vision of bringing in a shitload of dirt and creating like this oasis, which if you got airdropped in there by a helicopter with a blindfold on and someone told you to take a wild guess, like pick five places you think you are. You'd pick North Carolina, you'd pick maybe Boulder, Colorado, you'd pick Utah by the trees, yeah. by the, the ducks, by the fucking... Remember the big old swans? I was the fattest swan. Stop looking at me, swan. Stop looking at me, swan. There's a black swan in the creek, too. I didn't. I, I was on the other side of the fairway. Natalie I wanted to show Portman? you guys. Black swan. Natalie, Natalie Portman. Portman. She's, what's she doing? She doesn't even act anymore. Remember? Oh, she was she's she's probably still working back good. in the day. Sure. Um, but, but there's a photo in there. Oh, that's what I was saying. Photo in there of when he first built it. And when you, you just, it's an aerial shot. And it is nothing around but this just green pasture of oasis golf. Oh. Tricked out. And it's where all the big boys used to play. It's, I mean, you go in that, you feel awesome. You go in that locker room. Talk about where we didn't, where you feel like you don't belong. MJ, uh, JR was in there, ex presidents, football, Devontae Adams. Uh, yeah. Legit. I mean, I can't even Always think of got a spot. Yeah. I, I heard today, uh, had breakfast with our boy, Brendan Welsh. His old man, Lou's got a star locker room. Oh, there. sweet Lou. God yeah. rest your soul. Lou, we miss you every day. Fala. Talk about a million dollar smile. Yeah. Remember when sweet Lou used to come in with that? Million you know, dollar stories too. Oh, uh, he was what a guy. He was gone way too quickly. But yeah, only two houses on the whole course. Steve Wynn had the one on eighteen where you went over there and you wanted to try to play that was back here. I wanted to see it was my nugget. I was gonna let you play it too. I know you but were. But Caddy's like, uh, uh, up dog. Can't even up have dog. you walk over there. I go, uh, there's only cats live in that goes, place. He goes, unfortunately, can't let you go in there, buddy. Can't let you go in there. <laughs> I'm like, ups play it if you want. I'm not gonna go like take a dump and yeah, loops is like, we can't let him play that. He's like, I'm here too. He's gonna get that up and down. I'm gonna go so like, Yeah, you're right. I'll be sorry, buddy, you can't play that. Um, two houses on the whole place. One for Steve Wynn, when obviously the owner, and then he had his buddy who ran the whole ran the whole uh, Shadow Creek for him when it was owned by Wynn. They sold it, but now that house his buddy lived in. Our caddy told us this rich guy bought it. There's just three hairless cats. Yeah, what are those cats called? Kyle, look up hairless cats, please. I don't know, but they're ugly. But they're living in this mansion at Shadow Creek, and that's it. Yeah, Imagine they being just that have little cat caretakers in there. That's crazy to me, man. Crazy to me. I wonder if they got any pretty litter in there. I'm just, yeah, that's what it was. All this, the sphincter. because you can Sh- see their sphincter. sphincter. There's no hair covering their sphincter. <laughs> they get the old Brazilian wax job there. But I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I, if I had billions of dollars, I still wouldn't have a house just for like, I, I, I'm not a cat guy, so it would be dogs for me, but I would just have my three dogs. I'd give it to one of my boys. Franchise Shane Taylor. There you go, buddy. How about it? Yeah. Live in there. Dog of the week. Yeah. How have about a, have a yeah. time? But uh, thank you to Tom Riley. It was an unbelievable day. Then we go uh, right to Yellowtail for a National League dinner. Uh, Riley's got his own chopsticks at Yellowtail. That's when you know you come in there and you're does, it says he? Tom Riley on his chopsticks. Wow. That's a nice touch. Does he still like to use the fork? Or? Oh, no, he goes just chop. Yeah, like one, one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, food was unbelievable. And then we all, in, in, in DraftKings, Mr. Curfew style, we hammered the Vegas Golden Knights. They came out, laid it to them early. Um, the Red Wings hung around, man. Hung yeah. around, made it two one, made it two, uh, made three, it two three. two three three. But anyways, we got it done. How much fun was that? Just uh, it was epic. That's the thing MGM about, suite there, best place to watch a hockey game. That's the thing about gambling. Like obviously, gamble responsibly out there. But when you go to a game with your boys and you got a little cheddar on it, and you're like, let's go, let's go. It was unbelievable. And I just want to parlay it into UFC two ninety nine. Dustin Poirier, man, this guy is an absolute legend. I don't know for the fellows out there to watch the fight. Fought this up and coming wrestler. Me and Loops had it on the phone in the in the street watching the game. I took him at plus one eighty five, and Loops is like, "Oh, he's in one. He's in one." Fights him off. Boom, boom, boom. Knocks him out. Crazy. Diving. He's a legend, bro. He and is now he's gonna fight Islam for the belt. That fight, he fought a young and up and comer ups, and now he's gonna get a chance for the championship again. So wow. Thirty five years old. Thirty five years. I old. I mean, man. some of his knockouts. There was a highlight that UFC Instagram put out the other day when he went through. I mean, he took down McGregor, which was just oh, a beat yeah, down. Like, dude. he beat his ass. I mean, he's taken down everybody. He has, right? He's 35 years old. Yeah. And, and I remember at one point 30. he said he was done. Yeah, 30 remember? UFC fights. Crazy. 
Yeah, he did. Uh, he did a UFC podcast the last couple of days about how he was battling some mental toughness or mental just depression. Yeah. Almost retired, uh, fought through it, but it was in Miami and. Dana White, like, I haven't been to Miami in forever. I think you're actually going this weekend for Jimbo's birthday party, but this city's electric. Yeah. Electric. Well, Biggest gate in the history of the arena, and that's where the Heat play. That's the biggest gate ever for you for any kind of sporting event. They can stockpile them in around the octagon. Yeah. It was it was unbelievable. But Poirier, you're the man. And then last but not least here, um, in our little intro, I took Scotty Scheffler for plus six feet. I know. Congrats. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, is that yeah, the yeah, first time yeah. you ever did, a, like, a call like that? Let's be honest. I think you threw a thousand down for a plus six hundred. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to do it on a guy and not just waste your money, that's the guy. Yeah, I mean, his hadn't game won yet. Fire, hadn't won yet, but his game is so good. It's a ball striking course. Uh, I did a little bit of research and found out that he had a new putter. So he had a new putter that he's been using that I thought was you know coming heading in the right direction. Smaller field because it's one of the uh, whatever they call it uh, elevated events. I thought, hey, this guy's going to get it done, and he found a way to get it done for me. And then I put another 1,000 on him at, uh, at the halfway point or after the third round at minus 275. I gave him another 1,000. Yeah, because he starts to heat up on the weekends. I just thought this is the guy. This good luck, is good the luck guy. catching him. The Players' Championship presented by Adidas Golf. Made for wherever you play. Ooh, baby. I would love to play this course. Yeah. Never played it. Yeah, let's just touch on Adidas Golf for a sec. This is one of our first new ads for Adidas Golf. Yeah, we're going to be doing the Players' Championship, all four majors, and then it's right around the corner. Yeah. Tea time segment. Tea when, time. When the teams miss the playoffs, and then when you lose in the first round, second round, third round, it's tea times. Uh, going to be presented by our good friends at Adidas Golf. But, yeah, they gave us some cool shit when we were at the uh, – The Waste Management Open. Yeah, I think the line's great. I got this new half zip-up. It's like a windbreaker. Look good. It's tits. Yeah, I, I think somehow – when you took the Sprinter van to Vegas, I someone took took my windbreaker. They did, huh? Yeah, because that's the only uh, thing that I didn't get out of my box. Let's check Garrett's closet. I, I think it was there Garrett anyone, lights the baggie. Was there anyone that was a double XL riding around the Sprinter van that would have sniped that on me? No, no, there wasn't. <laughs> only you, my friend. Shit. Well, maybe I misplaced it. Though, but <laughs> although we did have a bunch of the boys uh, in there. No, no, it's just you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we if we had a security camera in there, I bet you there'd be some footage of some some uh, foul play with the with that with the sticky hand. Oh, Adidas Golf, I'll take that fella. Um, but listen, I've never played the TPC Up Dog. I've been there one time uh, back when I played for Tampa. Speaking of tee times, we missed the playoffs. Me and Nick Tardaski went to check it out. I mean, unbelievable atmosphere. Twenty five bananas up for grabs this week, Up Dog. Um, and you talk about not a cheap course to play. I saw something online, 900 bucks to play a round at Sawgrass. It looks well worth it. Yeah. I mean, the Pete Dye course to your eye, challenging. I mean, and it's a player's course. It's, it's challenging to the utmost confident golfer out there, which is why you brought this up earlier. And I, and I read this too. No ever back-to-back winners. Crazy. Crazy. But... There's a chance that your boy, Scotty Scheffler, if you're going to take him again, I'm not sure. you got to ask you in a second here. He wins last week. He won in 2023 there. Is this the year maybe someone pulls through? Listen, I thought about taking him. Yeah. I, I mean, his did. odds are. Well, he just won you six plus, grand. I, plus 500. I'd say you'd be cheating on him if you didn't. Yeah, listen, he's plus 500. And the next closest guy to him is Rory at plus 1,200 on DraftKings. That's a big spread, man. So, listen, I just... I, I think there's obviously a reason why no one's gone back to back. I think he won last weekend. I think it takes a little bit of the pressure off that he hadn't won already. And I don't think he's going to putt it well enough. I think the greens at, at the players are trickier than Bay Hill. There's a lot of different levels on the old Pete die. I don't think his flat stick's going to hold up. But yeah, you kind of got to bring your whole game. You got to bring the whole bag. You know what? I, I had a chance to watch uh, a little inside the players today. Which was great because it turned it on early. I was up early. I was six thirty a.m. Boom! I'm in the chamber, fired on, and Not uh, out. you know, no, I'm watching Rory play and Rory. He's chipping balls from different areas on the green, and I'm like, oh, this is I'm getting a live touch in on on a practice round. But what I did get a chance to see was this Mark McCumber. Remember him? How do I know that name? Mark McCumber. He won in 1988, but he's Holy a local. Shit. He's the first ever local to win. Right, so he had the crowd behind him, and he talks about the the golf course. It was a little bit different back then, he says. But Pete Dye, you know, he wanted to challenge all the players. He's like, "You guys are the best in the world. I want to like, 
I want you to show up here and to your eye, I want this to be the most challenging golf course ever. And then down the stretch, if you look at the last couple of holes and what they are, I want you to sweat. Like this is this is the fifth. This break is the, out the monkey bump. Break, break out the monkey <laughs> bump. This is your fifth major, right? This is the fifth major, arguably. Toughest one to win as a regular golf tournament. I want down the stretch, you guys to be challenged. Now, what he talks about is from the tee, some of the tee boxes, and this is hilarious because we could, you and I as golfers, we're looking around, we're like, the tee is not lined up down the middle of the fairway. Well, he does this purposely on these. Like he'll he'll angle it down like the left side of the fairway and you're like, well, it's all the room is on the right. So he's, he's playing like mind games yeah. with you. And then he also talks about, you know, it's hole 17, but he's like, if I put a 130 yard golf uh, golf hole with just bunkers around it, and like deep rough, you guys would hit the green 85% of the time. But when I surround it by a, you know, by a body of water, yeah. you guys are going to make, f- you're going to make five, you're, seven, nine. You're going to, you know what I mean? A lot. It's crazy how a hole that's 135 yards, right? What was 17 playing that shadow? What was it playing? 130? You hit two wedges to fucking six yeah. feet. But there with the wind swirling in the stadium, it's crazy up dog. And you're so right. If you, when, when you go to the course, when you get to 16, the course completely changes. The rest of the course is kind of tucked in trees, and, it's, and then you get to 16, and it's the big par five. Then you got 17, 18, where all the water, and, and it's like a completely different course. And Pete Dye's wife actually said to him about 17, she said, well, why don't you just make it an island? Right? He wasn't sure what he was going to do with it. She said, just make it an island, and the rest is fishing. Yeah. So she, she gets a lot of credit for it, but it's crazy when you get to 16 how much that course changes, and it's just on. Anything can happen. Yeah. Stephen Weiss, I played with Weiser. Shout out to my boy. He's a beauty. Weiser's a beauty. I speared him. He used to go the there all the time. Yeah. He was a great golfer too. Yeah. But he used to go play that all the time. Got to give me the invite a couple times, but I never, never made it up there. But um, who do you got winning it this weekend, fella? Yeah. Hey, listen. I want to touch one quick, one thing real quick with you here. I want uh, the Netflix full swing. Mm-hmm. I watched it all the last day. I was hung cheese on the fucking couch for a day and a half. Hung, hung. You, a day and a half. Hung. <laughs> Hung. I, well, I got up Monday morning, went to the fucking Big Canyon Spa, hot tub, steamer, shook it off, but hung. I, I wasn't doing much more than that. It, doors open, everything open, but I'm like, I'll watch this. So Zach Johnson was literally sharing houses with Jordan Spieth. Now, now maybe this is smart by Spieth and Thomas, right? The captain of the Ryder Cup team, they're like, hey, waste management, you can stay with us. So they were, they were staying in houses with him. They were buddies with Zach Johnson, flat out buddies with Zach Johnson. And then, and then you go to, like, Keegan Bradley, who, like, the whole time, all he wanted to do was on the Ryder Cup. He's like, I feel like I'm on the outside in. And anyways, he ends up taking Justin Thomas. And when you watch this Netflix special, you're like, they fucked Keegan. Keegan was the guy. And I get it. If you, if I was a captain and you were on the fence up, dog, I would probably take you. I would take you. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but when you see this happen in a, in a way it goes throughout the season, that Keegan got fucked. It was, and when Zach Johnson called him, he's like, hey, man, I'm sorry, Keegan. You, you deserve to be on this team. But I, I guess good for Thomas. He did enough ball licking that it got him on the team. So he's a you, ball licker. And listen, he looked to be a little bit of a ball lick. But he played great in the Ryder Cup. I mean, do you remember all that stuff with Cantley and his hat? Oh, it was terrible. And then yeah. Rory tried to fight Joe Lacava on the green. Yeah, yeah like, well, that was... Yeah, and Joe just happened to be with us not too long before that. Yeah. Where was that at? Big Canyon he was with us. Yeah, you played, you played with him, didn't you? Yes, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. And and I, I by rights, he should have. If I was Rory, I would have done the same thing. He made that – Cantley made that long putt, and he stood he in front stood of Rory. right in Rory's lap. And Rory was still a 30-foot putt away. Yeah. And he, yeah. But, like, he was way out of the – and he stood right over him and was like, wait, yeah, it was bad. It was crazy. And if – listen, the whole, I'll be so honest. They show all the, that. Oh, yeah, the whole Netflix season's not great. The last two of the Ryder Cup are great. Like, they follow Tom Kim around. I mean, nice kid. Not nerd. Uh, they follow Joel – What's his name? The guy who took his shirt off. No. <laughs> Joel DeHame, or what's his name? The guy who took his tarp off last year at the... Uh, okay. And, I mean, he's struggling. He's talking about how he's famous now. But, it's, I mean, it, it's not a great season. But the last two episodes, man, of the Ryder Cup behind the scenes, like Shane Lowry's yelling at Joe Lakoff, get the fuck off the green, man. And then Rory's going at him in the parking lot. I'm like, this is this is great. This is yeah, great. that's why team golf should be more team golf. Yeah. Right? If you get a stick up for your buddy. Yeah, if you get a chance, try to just watch the last two episodes. Yeah, you don't I was to waste your time with the rest. Awesome. That's and then good tell tip. me how you feel. Uh, but sorry, back to the Players' Championship presented by Adidas Golf here at Miss Curfew. Go check out their new line, like the Updog said. They got some cool, cool new stuff. Um, more of like a, they're going for more of a, 
what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, not a lot of greens. Not retro, but more like. Well, they're bringing it back. They're Baggy. bringing it like. What's the word I'm looking for here? I haven't tried on the pants or anything. What, what I got the shorts. The shorts are pretty. Nice. Every ten years, the things are supposed to come back. Are we at the 19 like you know 96 master look yet with the I don't know big baggy pants, Tom tight glasses. We go t- Tiger Woods with the big little baggy pants, but they're got they got some cool stuff. I'm not sure what the word I was looking for there, up dog. I blame Vegas on that. But who do you got, fella? Who are you taking? Players Championship. Listen, long shot winner Will Zalatoris. He's got the new Trending. lab golf putter that I just ordered. It looks badass. Um, I'm plus twenty five hundy and plus two eighty as a top ten tickler. Uh, so listen, that's my that's my guy. Tickler. And then for those of you out there, and I know a lot of Canadians up there, you got you're left handed. I know it's fucking great. You show up to the golf course up in Canada, two three of your buddies are lefties because you guys are beauties. Well, I'm a lefty, top lefty. I'm taking Herman Munson. Harmon. Harmon Munson. <laughs> Who the hell is He's that? minus 145. No, it's Harmon. It's- oh, Brian Harmon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Harmon. Oh, you took my guy. No. W- well, no. I'm taking him as the top lefty. He's minus 145. It's a great bet on great the DraftKings app. So, and he's got to go against two other guys. He's got Montgomery, and he's got Higgy, Hugo. Hugo's a South African kid. I'm taking Harmon versus Hugo and McIntyre. Yeah, McIntyre. So McIntyre's there's three left. Scottish guy playing the Ryder Cup, and the other guy's a South African kid. Minus 145. Not a bad bet. I like Harmon. He wears the flat brim like I do. His, his, his brim is even flatter than my brim. I mean, he's coming off the British, too, right? He's I still got some swag. I take a lot of heat from the fellows online at Mr. Curfew about the flat brims. A lot of guys give it to me. Don't love it. Not I a fan of it. Why? But I say, that's your look. That's my look. Uh, I love that lefty pick, though, because, listen, I got my two picks here at DraftKings, baby. I'm going to take Jordan Spieth. At plus twenty eight hundred to win the Players Championship, I don't know. I'm just I, I'm like you, up dog. I've been watching live at the Players the last couple of days. They've said the last certain amount of winners have gone early, late. Spieth's going off Thursday morning at eight forty five with Rory and somebody else, so he plays in the early, late. I just think I just think it's a it's a ball striking course. We got to keep it in play. You got to get up and down a lot. I don't know. It just feels like he's been kind of flying out of the radar for me. And then I'm going with your guy, the lefty, Brian Harmon, at plus 4,500. That's tasty. Was in the mix uh, at the Honda. They changed the name of it. And I think he was in the mix a little bit last weekend as well. But I just think, because it's not a Bombers course ups, you can't just overpower TPC Sawgrass. Uh, and I just think Brian Harmon, after what he did at the Open Championship, he's a bulldog. So I got Jordan Spieth and Brian Harmon. And sorry, who are you taking to win it? I got Zalatoris. Zalatoris. Plus 4,500. Buddy, great bet. He's been absolutely trending the right way up, dog. Coming off back surgery, he's got that new putter. Did you just buy his new putter? Yes, I did. Oh, that's I did. nice. That's nice. So the Players' Championship presented by our good friends at Adidas Golf. Uh, made for wherever you play. Check out their stuff online. They got some cool new stuff coming out. Look at all these kicks they got right here. Love the like, kicks. That's cool. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's killer. The word's not retro, but like they're, trying to, they're making their shit cool. Yeah. Right? They're trying to make their stuff like cool. Like a new It could be retro. Maybe it's retro. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. They got lots of stuff. I like that there, second though, yeah. pair there. I might Christina just bought a pair like that, like for the kicks. They're like the Stan, Stan Smiths. Yeah, exactly. Wow. They got everything here, but their, their stuff's nice. So Adidas Golf, thank you. Up dog. NHL trade deadline recap here, fella. I thought it was a great trade deadline. Um listen, a lot of people, a lot of people choked. Choked. About this long long term IR, we can get into that later. But listen, I'm going to go to my winners of the of, of the NHL draft. Uh, sorry, the NHL trade deadline, and it kind of went right where my money's been placed. I took the Carolina Hurricanes at the beginning of the year at plus a thousand, a thousand to win ten thousand. Haven't loved the way they played all year. Um, I love the pickups they made at the deadline. Yeah, I, I mean, for once, Don Waddell went out there, gave his balls a tug, and went out and made this team better. Freddie Anderson's coming back. I just think Carolina right now, look out for them. Um, I think McFarland and Joe Sack, Joe Sack, you could call Colorado did a hell of a job. Uh, and I honestly, the Vegas Golden Knights, they once they did it again, but those are my three teams that went out and got extremely better. Uh, we saw Vegas the other night, but I just think those GMs, if you're a player in those dressing rooms ups, you're fired up. Yeah. I will say this. I watched the Calgary Flames, Carolina Hurricanes game, their first one after the trade deadline, the forwards for Carolina right now are moving the biscuit. Like I have never seen it was, it was Shveshnikov, Aho. I mean, these guys were, they, they had this other life. 
you know, and, and when I look at Edmonton's team, for example, the first two games out of the deadline, they lay eggs. They don't, you know, they lose to Buffalo and then they go lose to Boston or who did they go in and lose to? No, they beat they Boston 2-1. They lost to Buffalo on my Saturday. Lost Columbus. And then Columbus, you know, but, but Carolina, buddy, coming out of the gates. Wow. What a game they played. So no, I, I, I like that. Uh, you touch on Colorado. I think they got tougher. I think they got faster. Um, and then for me, I like the Winnipeg Jets picking up Tyler Toffoli. They they realize where they are right now, and they're in a great spot. Yeah, they are. And good. You're going to need to score goals in the playoffs, especially in the West. Yeah, I, listen. I, if the Edmonton Oilers fans are listening out there, your your biggest supporter of the Edmonton Oilers right now, besides Craig Lupul, is Joffrey Lupul. Loops loves this team. I mean, every time we rip Darnell Nurse, he he, he just won't have it. He sticks up for him. I mean, the, the the play the Nurse made in Buffalo and that the game we lost was, I mean, just typical Darnell Nurse. Caught in between, tries to block it, game over. Um, but Loops loves that team. He's, yeah. he's all in on the Oilers. He loves their depth. He thinks their their D's good enough, and he thinks their goaltending's good enough. I, I will don't tell. Think so I don't. I, I I don't think so. I, I love him more than anyone too. But goaltending is going to be shaky, and the D just make too many suspect. Pizza place. Yeah, I mean, I hope they prove us wrong, but I'm with you. I'm not drinking the Kool Aid again this year. Um, like I said, the Abs, great moves by them, got bigger. Training kid from Nashville is a beast. That's a great pickup. And then our boy John Cooper down in Tampa, Julian Breezeball. Those two guys, they kind of fly under the radar. Uh, Anthony Duclair and Matt Dumba, I think, are both great pickups. I was just desperately trying to, obviously, Brad Tree does not listen to Mr. Curfew because I'm like, somebody get Dumba in Toronto. Listen, the Lightning needed defense was probably more than Toronto did. I think Dumba's going to go down there, and I think he's going to be great down there. Yeah. I think you put him in that culture with Stanley Cup champions, John Cooper behind the bench, you get to live in Tampa, and you just go play. I think it's going to be a, a great fit for them, and I think Duclair's a hell of a player too. Good yeah. skill. I think those are two good pickups for them. No, I think puck moving right-handed D in this league, hard to come by. Hard to come by at the deadline, hard to come by a draft pick. Um, but I – I always question Matt Dumba as a as a person, as like a leader. But when you put him in that room of champions, he's going to take a seat to those guys, and I think he'll be able to. I think he'll be able to bring to bring what he what he's capable of. Yeah, I, I agree. And then back to the Carolina Hurricanes, Michael Bunting gets shipped to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, is this just Kyle Dubas loving Michael Bunting some more, or is this Carolina saying, "Hey, if you want this trade, you got to you know." Well, you got to take Bunting. If you, we don't, we, we we don't want him. I mean, it's just I don't that know, one to but, me was like why. But looking from the inside out or outside in, outside in, um, I would say that this sort of deal affected Sidney Crosby's relationship with him. Yeah, Crosby's like, what the hell are you doing? Maybe that was Kyle Dubnis being like, I got to get something back here to to maybe throws Bunting on Crosby's line, right? And maybe that it remerges Bunting's career and keeps Sid somewhat. I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see. You were you were pushing hard for something to get done with with Sid at the deadline. It would have been amazing if had it. But well, you, I think it's solidified now. That's going to happen in the summer or somewhere. You I can mean, see how frustrated he is. Yeah, like they asked him, he's like, "That's go ask management that." But you, I don't know when you when you talk about Sidney Crosby, it's obviously like Mario Lemieux, right? Him and Mario are the two, and you throw Yogs in there. But Mario Lemieux and Sidney Crosby, like does Sidney Crosby want to go play somewhere else? I I don't know. I would if I was him. You know, you've, you've done everything you could in Pittsburgh. I think Colorado go there with Nathan McKinnon, a, a kid that you mentored, and try to go win a couple more. But we'll see if that I happens. think Ottawa's thrown in the towel. I think their leader, this Chris Letang's never played this worse of hockey wow. in his life. Yeah, you see, you watch Sid's interview, Malkin. I mean, what does Malkin have to play for now? Jeff Carter. These guys are just, they're throwing it in. Like, they got Ottawa tonight, and I, I, I imagine Ottawa's just going to steamroll them. We'll get to Ottawa. We'll get, huh? we'll get to Ottawa. We are going to get to Ottawa. Other deadline deals here up, dog, my man. Joel Edmondson to Toronto. Love I absolutely it. love it. Yep. And I know this next one you're a big fan of for the Florida Panthers. Kyle Ocposo. I, I thought that was a gr- I mean, great sign. You know why? Because this guy has, he's not one, but he's always been a guy that plays heart and soul hockey, plays the same way. He's got great hands. He's going to fit in great, whether he's on the first line, third line, fourth line. I just think he's a complimentary player and a great addition. Yeah. When you get a guy, you don't want him to be this, the personality that's going to try to take over a room. I think he's the perfect fit. And it all just is, you know, I think Florida, the team with Bill Zito and, and Paul Maurice as the coach, I think they ask their players. 
I think they call in Barky and say, do you want Vladdy Tarasenko in this room? I think they call in Matty Kachuk and say, hey, do you think Kyle Ocposo would be a great addition? You know, do we do we need this type of player? I think that's sort of the mojo they have going, Obes, and it's worked and it's paid off. And they and Carolina are set up to be, you know, to go the distance here in the East. They're deep, man. Florida is deep. Cousins yeah. down the fourth line now here on Daily Faceoff, but – yeah, I love it. Just and you, anytime you can put a captain in your dressing room, right? Yeah, a leader. It's it's unbelievable. Um, all these little deals here that Princey put in for us are all little veteran deals that are sneaky good. Jason Zucker, Nashville is great. Patty Maroon to the Boston Bruins, I think, is a great pickup for the bees. Uh, we all know the big rigs resume. Resume. Uh, we all know what happened to Big Luch at the start of the year. You bring Patty in there, give some size, and another sneaky trade: Eric Johnson to the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, I like that one. Big right-handed defenseman. Won a Stanley Cup. And when we had uh, DB and uh, Jonesy on earlier in the year, it was like, I asked him a couple times, like, you guys are in a tough situation because you want to reward your guys for putting you in this situation. But at the same time, you have a, a process of where you want to go. I think if picking up a guy like Aaron Johnson shows Couturier and the boys, like, hey, all right, let, let's see what we can do. You know, let's see if we, when we get in what we can do. I just think it's it gives the boys a little bit of, all right, maybe we can do something here. Up. No, absolutely, buddy. Absolutely. And then your boy Jake Allen to the New Jersey Devils. Listen, they were obviously in on Markey. And what? They went the other way. They got Allen and Kopno Kikieki or what's his name? Yeah. <laughs> Lucky I put you that. Kapo Kakineki. Yeah, that's how you. Kapo. Yeah, that's the guy they got. <laughs> Kapo Kakinen. Kakinen. Kapo Kakinen. Yeah. So they went out and got two NHL goalies. Listen, I think they are. In, I think they will try to make a bigger play at Marquee in the deadline. But I, I think that brings in two veteran guys that at least you can say, "Hey, Greener, Hughesy, and the boys, let's give it a try." Like I don't, I don't yeah. know if they're going to get in ups. I, I really well, I think don't Jake know Allen was a great pick for them. I think the Oilers could have grabbed like a Jake Allen. Although I know Pickard had a t- shutout this weekend. Um, you know they played Pittsburgh. The Latang threw McDavid the biggest pizza I've ever watched in my life. Yeah, it. it I just think having depth that clearly, was a pizza. Jake, Jake Allen. Yeah, had a run with the Blues with the Cup as a backup, but nonetheless, he had a run with us when I was with St. Louis, right to San Jose. You know, he's behind Brian Elliott, but he knows how to kick, and he's a, he's a great guy. I actually text Frosty and said, "You guys got a great guy coming in here, and Jake Allen, he's going to be a great fit." Yeah, you've always had good things to say about him. He did go to Montreal and play better than expected when they when he first got traded from St. Louis. Um, right now the Devils are at 66, and the Detroit Red Wings are at 72 in the Islanders. I mean, they're still in it. They're still in it. they got to get going here. they got to get going. I would love to see them get in, though. Obviously, love Greener, love Frosty. I think Jack Hughes is great for the game. These two goalies help them out, up dog. But overall, ups, I thought it was a great trade, line, trade deadline. I thought GMs would have made some good moves. Uh, and time will tell here um, after the playoffs get going. So uh, it's a missing curfew. Oh, oh, dog of the week. Listen. The big Russian train, Valery Nuchiskin, is back. The big boy is back, and the Avs need this guy, man. Uh, I was watching their game last week. Um, the record with him in the lineup and the record without him in the lineup, it, it, it's pretty impressive. He got the OT winner against the Minnesota Wild on Friday night. I had money on the Avs. He's back. You can see he's a little rusty up, dog, but he went to the net in overtime, got rewarded. That's why he's a missing curfew. Ooh, ooh. Dog of the week. They need this big boy. Yeah, they sure do. And, I mean, what better way to come back into, you know, into form by just going to the net and using your body and scoring a big goal for your team? I mean, what better way and what better feeling than for a guy like that who's, you know, he missed 22 games to come back and just be a force and have a huge goal for their team, um, you know, against the Wild who are pressing for points. So that was a big game for them. Up dog, get this guy a Labatt Blue, fella. Presented by Labatt Blue Light, the pristine Pilsner. Enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsible, fella. Beer, USA, Buffalo, New York. I'll tell you what, up dog. If if you're picking a team, you want me and you want me and you on your team because we're handing out ice cold beers every week here. You're darn right. And we're handing out some more ice cold ones. You set the tone. You said this you said this to me right when you saw this guy play his first game. Go ahead, go ahead, fire him in the bat, please. Ah, right up north in Edmonton, Alberta, Sam Carrick. What a new addition to this uh, to this Oilers team to bring some fucking fight, some fu. Uh, he fights Obes his first game. Matthew Oliver, who's an absolute killer. killer. This guy's a killer in Columbus. Uh, in his debut, 
it was just it was awesome. I think this guy was just going around, kind of running his mouth. He was getting aggressive, and Sam, right off the draw, center ice, just goes, you know what? Not in my not in my house. And drops the mitts, has a great fight, ends up probably getting the worst of it. But I mean, he he hung in there for the guy that's you know got reach and got size over him. It was an epic tilt, and just what a good way. You know what it's like in a new dressing room. You yeah. go in, the guys are like, "Hey, nice to meet you." Like, what do you got? And you just bring it. Yeah, right. It's a good way to just you know earn some respect amongst your teammates, your coaches, the fans, GM. It's just it's a good look. Yeah. No, it's it's great for him to come in there and and fight right away. I I've been through it when I went to Vancouver. I didn't get my first fight. I think I actually just grabbed Adam Burrish out of the pile and fought him. But when you go to a new team and you're a guy that's supposed to bring some physicality, you want to get one in as quick as you can. And there's nothing harder in the NHL than fighting above your weight class. And Sam Carrick does it a lot. That all that Olivier is pound for pound, maybe the toughest guy in the league right now. Um, so good for him. Get him an ice cold the bat blue. Patty Waugh, they lost last night, but I already had it in the rundown. Should have taken the under in that Islanders Kings game. What was I thinking? I mean, that was just like you talk yeah. about. I mean, they had the Islanders brought the heat. They right? didn't bring the heat. Yeah, what was it? Well, no, they they brought the heat, couldn't score. They went 0 for 5 on their power play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kings got the best penalty kill in the NHL. But Patty Waugh, before last night, the Islanders are 7 2 and 1 in their last 10. They were sitting in a playoff spot before last night's game. Get Patty Waugh on the uh, Labatt Blue. The way they're playing defensively, the way they're playing away from the puck. Listen, he had a nice little gray suit on last night with a black on black tie. He looked absolutely great. Patty Waugh, get yourself a blue light. <laughs> you got these boys back in the mix up, dog. The Minnesota Wild. Up, get dog. You've been calling guys, for this. Listen, get you guys a big old case of Labatt blue lights. Listen, they pulled their goalie in overtime the other day against the Predators to go four on three. What I figured out, I've been saying this for years, like you said. If you need these points, why not? You know how hard it is to get the puck back from four on three power play? It's impossible. You got that extra guy that the team, they'll never get it over the red line to take a shot down. Now, in this case, I found out that the NHL has in place a rule where if you pull your goalie in overtime to have the extra man and you lose, you do not get any points. So, I mean, screw it. You either got the two points, you're chasing a team above you. So in this case, that's a crucial point. Um, I, I loved what it was. I think it's a John Hines. He came out and was like, See, "Fuck it." Yeah. So they take the point away. They take me. the point away if uh, you're tied. They took me Jersey. They took me Jersey, boy. They take the point away. Yes. It's not allowed. That's what we already got that point. What does it no, matter what we do in overtime? Not if you pull your tendy. That's. I don't know if I agree with that rule. I don't. I think that's not a good rule. You're going to take away our hard fought sixty points, sixty minute point because we pulled the goalie. I don't think you take it away from the lads. I like it. You do. Yeah. I think it should happen more. So you think that if that would have backfired, then that, that, you're okay with them losing the point? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, just I a. Know. That's. I mean, otherwise, just stay three on three. Yeah, but we we've played sixty minutes. We did. We earned that point. Yep. We earned that point, and yep. now we start overtime. And if John Hines is the head coach, it's his right to do whatever he wants to do with that goalie. But I, I see what the NHL. So they're, they're making it so it doesn't become a gimmicky thing, right? They start, they want to. Yep. Then everyone's doing it. Yeah, and I mean, people will do it down the stretch. I think they just set the example for it. If you're a team chasing other teams um, and they're just getting a point, you cannot afford to let them get another one. I thought you you got to get more. Point. Yeah, I thought John Hines' gotta... his post-game interview was awesome. He said, the one point doesn't do us good. We need to get two points every night. It would just suck if you're like, you know, I, I never played in overtime, so like you fight hard to get that point, and then we pull the goal, you lose the point. You're like, fuck, all that, and then we don't get a point, but. You got to give your balls you a touch. Just play sometimes. a little D out there. Play some D, boys. But I thought play it was a stick I, on puck. Thought it was a great move by John Hines. Up dog's been saying it for years. Fedorov, remember Fedorov did it over the KHL, and you were like, "Buddy, someone's got to do this in the show." Well, they were listening to you. Uh, get this guy Labat Blue, one of my former teammates, Brad Richards, and Big Dave Anderchuk. But I play with Richie. I just remember. Uh, sorry, they're in the hockey. They're in the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning Hall of Fame. I just remember getting to Tampa as a rookie and just remember watching Richie with the Conn Smythe, right? You know, then he invited me over to his house on Davis Island. It was just the sickest, biggest house that I've ever seen in my life. And he had just like sick, three sick cars. And he was a member at Old Memorial. And I'm like, this guy is living the fucking dream. Yeah. Right? He was like, a hell I, of a player, man. I got to stay in this league. Like, this guy's life is unbelievable. Um, so congratulations to Brad. Richie It's well-deserved. He was so big for when they won the Stanley Cup. He was the first guy that actually said to me, I remember, I was, I was dating this girl at the time. We had broke up. We got back together. And at that time, she was staying with me in Tampa. 
And he's like, hey, I, I heard a little rumor. I said, what's that? He said, I heard your, your, your girlfriend's living with you. I said, well, it's just temporary. He said, how old are you? I said, 24. He's like, yeah, good thinking, bud. He's like, please don't want to be living with your girlfriend at 24. <laughs> and Brad, Richie, thanks, fella. Because uh, I didn't. And I'm here still 40 being single, but I just thought it was good advice from a guy that's been around saying, hey, fella, focus on playing the game. Enjoy yourself. And I wanted to say to my boy, Vinny LeCavier, wow, did he look good. Vinny, whatever you're doing, buddy, it's working. He looks the same way he did when he's playing. Lean, nice tan. His hair was perfect. Um, Vinny, man, it was good to see her doing well. And to Brad Richards, I thought that was awesome up dog. Yeah, well done. I love Richie. Well, hell of a golfer, too. Yeah. One of the best. Yeah, he had a, just a great life in Tampa. You know, when I you know just look up is. to a guy, you're like, wow. Last and but not least here, I give this guy a Labatt Blue. Uh, I should have known not to bet against Hazy going yeah. back into Boston, but I got stung. But Kevin Hayes uh, had an unbelievable night. Uh, had his two nephews there. Um, listen, it was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. It was unbelievable. I thought he was the player of the game. He controlled yeah. the whole game. It was awesome. And uh, did it in, in class and in style, pointed up to the crowd after he scored his goal, had a great setup on the next. Um, listen, they went in and spanked the, the bees. And, yeah. and I will say this. On his goal, Shaddy, I, I don't know if you if you saw him coming or what, but you moved right out of the way, and he got the whole, the whole lane. It was a uh, – he cap it and put it right on his twig. Um, but I was pretty happy for him. It was, it, awesome. Was, it was awesome. And he had, like you said, the nephews and his family there for Morning Skate. Um, good on Hazy. Get that guy in the bat blue. Hazy, we're happy for you, buddy. Broadway Jimmy Scoops. We miss you every day, buddy. Uh, and then last but not least, shout out to Tom Wilson. His grandfather passed away uh, before Thursday's game. Uh, Willie told his teammates right before warm-up that went out and scored a goal. They won 6 nothing. So, uh, Willie, we're a big fan of here. Missing curfew, buddy. We're thinking about you. And... Uh, Way to go out there and represent your grandfather. We'll be right back. I'm Missing Curfew. Welcome back to Missing Curfew. It's time. Up dog, my man. It's milk carton time. And this one I'm doing with a heavy heart. I love the Ottawa Senators players. I love Brady Kachuk. I love Batherson. I love Timmy Stutzel. I, I love them all. I I'm pulling for them. I'm pulling for them, and I think Brady Kachuk is the best young captain in the NHL and eventually will be the best captain in the NHL. But, boys, I'm sorry. I'm putting you on the milk carton. You got swept through Southern California, and it's not like when we used to go through Southern California when you were playing the Ducks and Sharks and Kings, and they were all good, and they were all big and strong and good at home, and it just sucked. You had the San Jose Sharks and the Anaheim Ducks who are at the bottom of the league. The LA Kings have a decent squad. You cost me money. I bet you with my heart, fellas, you're on the milk curtain because you cost me some cheddar. You can't get swept through Southern California, up dog. Listen to this stat. The Senators have not beat a Western Conference team on the road this season. And eh, that's oh. bad. They lost all 15 games. And they only have the Jets in the wild left to do that. I don't think that's ever been done. But anyway, I will say this. They, you know, they had their rookie party. Okay, everyone knew that. Yeah, that's why. Came into, that. They came into Anaheim the next day after we saw them. They and that they should have won. That's what I'm saying. They actually peppered him. You yeah. know, it was our goalie, the Nanaheim, that, that stood on his head. But the um, stall, yeah, he was when it costs you money, it stings. And anytime things cost you money, there's a good chance you're going to be put on the milk cart. Yeah, I just, I, 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 I love these kids. I've got to know all of them. And, and, and listen, I'll be, they got talent. I know they, they have so much talent. They're still young. You're right. They should have won that game. But you can't go and you can't go to San Jose and lose. Um, Listen, I will say this to Steady Stevie Steos. Um, who, whoever their next head coach, this is the biggest decision in the Ottawa Senators franchise. They need to go out and hit an absolute home run with the head coach. Whoever Steady Stevie thinks it's going to be, you cannot fuck up this one. You need this to be the guy that can come in here and turn this around. I'm not putting it all on DJ Smith ups, but enough's enough with this team. It's time, boys. You got to turn this around. You're, you got too much talent. You're too good of guys. You got to find a way to win hockey games, up dog. That's yeah. what it's all about. You know that more than anyone. You got to find a way to win hockey games. And losing the last seven games is not perfect. God, cost to be cheddar. Turn it boys. around. Do you want to talk about? Yeah, you... I will. I will say this. Okay, Listen, go. the NHL salary cap and, and long term IR use. Um, whether this is milk carton or not, uh, I will say one thing. I love the fact that the Golden Knights are just. Plain and simple gamblers. They they are, they they put it all on the line. Bill Foley, uh, as as their owner, I think he just has stones, man. He has stones between his <laughs> mobas. He's got big mobas. He's got big mobas. 
Because listen, back to back years. Um, well, actually, let's just go back three years. He trades for Jack Eichel. Jack Eichel wanted surgery on his neck. Uh, Buffalo was electing to to say no. You're not going to do it this way. So they took a shot and they brought him in and said you can do the surgery you want. And he, you know, he misses an extended period of time, but they get him back. It takes him a year to get ready, but it works. It works. They win a Stanley Cup. Jack Eichel's healthy. He's one of the best players in the NHL. But great on you for taking the chance. Now they're taking a chance on another guy with term who's battled knee injuries, Thomas Hurdle, who makes eight million bucks for the next six years, and you're gonna just give away young players and and I, I get it. Your young players may not ever pan out. They could be flops, but they could be Shea Weber's of the world. They could be fucking, you know, Carly Kale McCarr at that. Who knows what you could pick? These kids are good nowadays. You trade for Thomas Hurdle and you fucking test your stones again and you go in and say, I know my team right now isn't playing great, but with one or two pieces, you know, that that we're going to have come playoff time, can't have them now because we're over the cap, we might have a chance to win again because I think when game one starts, if Stone is healthy and if, I I think Martinez is out, but if if Carrier, uh, Stone, and and Hurdle Hurdle are back, they're going to have a cap of over 100 million bucks. And that is just well thought out, well thought out. So the NHL, I mean, I would say this. I'll put all the other teams in the milk carton who don't have balls to go do this when you know your team is right there. Just give it up and go try to win a cup because look at what Vegas did. It worked, and now they're doing it again, backing it up. Yeah, I think it was Lawman Gary Lawless that said, you know, after they did it, that the, this fan base and, and players, but, but like they should really respect what Bill Foley and this man yeah. does, man. You know, like it's, they just go out and, like you said, they got big mamas and, and they get it done. Um, Thomas Hurdle, I mean, he is such a sick player. He's going to be great on the well, team. Every time I hear his name, I just remember Rock'em Sock'em where Grapes is like, if you turtle, they were call you Myrtle. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, you set it up, dog. And I will say this. I, I'm so sick of all this fucking long-term IR talk and this and that and this and that. It's because of this stu- stupid, hard salary cap we have. It's time to get rid of it. It's time for a luxury tax. Brad Tree Living's up in Toronto where they make billions of dollars a year uh, in revenue or whatever it is, and he can't make a fucking trade because he's up against it. Let him pay that luxury tax. It's just, to me, there's ways around the cap. I think it's a bad look for the league. Go to a luxury tax. It's not going to happen until Bettman shuts it down. Whatever that's going to be, nobody knows. But, hey, man, Bill Foley and those boys, Kelly McCrimmon, good on him. Good yeah. luck playing Vegas in the first round. You don't right. want him. I know, I know I get it. And touching on what you just said, I think if they do create this luxury tax, make it expensive. Make it really expensive for these teams to do this. And then everyone's going to benefit from it. Players are going to make more money. The teams that suck and have no you know, internal revenue or whatever, you're relying on the TV deal, which isn't perfect either, they're all going to make more money. And the more money, the, the bigger teams, the Vegas, the New Yorks, Get back to them going deep in the playoffs, and it makes everyone more money. Like, yeah. the parody is great, yeah, but we don't parody. need Carolina or Florida and fucking Minnesota in the in the finals. We need the big boys. We do. I mean, every year the teams are still the same teams. Florida, Boston, Toronto, same as last year. New York, Carolina, Philly, that's a surprise. Yeah. Tampa, Detroit, Islanders, same teams. Dallas, Winnipeg, Colorado, same in the Central last year. Where's the parody? Yeah, yeah. Columbus still stinks. I mean, Arizona stinks. <laughs> Ducks stink. Yeah. Where's the parody? No parody. Yeah. Let's I go. I want. I want no salary cap. I'm sick of it. Talk about parody when, uh, <laughs> when, when you pick the Chicago Blackhawks to lose and they're minus, you know, they're plus five eighty. Oh, that was great. You're like, you're fuck. We're playing Shadow Creek. You're like, oops. You think the, you think the Hawks go in there and beat the Caps? <laughs> I go, I don't know, fella. I go, maybe take a get the get the goal to half. You're like. I'm like, just don't take them. The Caps are going to win that game. Sure, sure Save enough. me money. Thanks, sure bro. enough, we're like, you're like, what's the score of that Caps cost game? Like, <laughs> three nothing Caps, fella. Uh, milk carton, say, Brady, Batherson, you beauty. I love you, boys, but I got to put you on the milk carton because, hey, you're costing me cheddar. But uh, up dog last night, Devils, Rangers. I love Matt Rempe. I love you, kid. I love you. However, listen, there is an unwritten rule in the league. The New Jersey Devils go out and trade for Curtis McDermott. They fly him all the way across the country to bring him in because you, my friend Matt Rempe, it's, it's a compliment to you because you're you're disrupting the whole fucking league. 
So now Tom Fitzgerald has got to make a trade, right? I guarantee you McFarlane did not think his phone would ring for Curtis McDermott. He's like, oh, oh yeah. McDermott? Yeah. Well, yeah, sure, I'll take uh, whatever. But I love McDermott. I love what he did in Colorado. He was good for them. He could play forward. He could play D. Listen, I said a couple weeks ago on this podcast that Rempe does not have to fight every night. I, I don't think he should fight every night. However, when the big boy comes into your rink from a trade, Rangers, Devils, kid, you got to fight him. You got to fight him right off the get-go. It sucks. I've been there. Maybe not to the level that you're doing it. I was not fighting the big boys like you're doing. I get it, Rempe. It sucks. But up dog, there is an unwritten rule that if that heavyweight comes into your barn, Rangers, Devils, he's got to fight. Yeah. He's got to. Unfortunately, if people are not going to like it, Rempe, I love you, kid. You should have fought him there. You should have fought him right off the get-go. It would have been done with, and it would have been over with. Now, he's got to wait till they play again. He's going to get suspended. They're going to throw the book at him. He's going to get at least five. George is going to throw the book at this kid. He's getting know, five at least. I know, it sucks. But I just think, listen, kid, I, I think you should have fought him. That's all I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. It's a tough, it's a bad hit. So so I like, I, I went in saying this all along, is he's earned his respect now to say no to guys, whether this guy, McDermott, is the new heavyweight for the New Jersey Devils or not. It's in your building, so I think that even makes it like he's I do it on, rook, I do it on my time. But this is what I'm saying. He's already... He's already proved himself five times with five of the biggest heavyweights. Why does he need to go six? Just because they're rivals. But, but I will say this: you got to understand the game, and when things happen throughout the game, whether someone hits your player and you got to stick up for that guy, or you hit someone on their team and you got to answer the bell, that is when, to me, you're forced to play the game of hockey like it's supposed to be played. You chicken wing the guy, you get him in the chops, he's down, you get fucking you get protected by your teammates and the ref. You gotta sneak away understanding you gotta fight the guy. I think he I think if he fights McDermott there, well it, now he has Georgie, to fight him. yeah, but Georgie takes that and goes, Okay, at least he stood up and fought after, you know, the guys were coming after him. Like he's gonna get suspended five games, yes. I think it would be less if he stood up and fought. And that's I, kind of my thing, like you, you know, there's a time and a place, and maybe at last night's game, at the start of the game, wasn't the time. But as soon as you chicken wing the guy, that's when you got to go. You have to. Yeah, I mean, at that point, he was, he was, he knew he was done. He knew he was getting tossed out. Right? He fucking out, but I'm ready to chops. I know that's when you just that's when your wires. You're, you're just still, you're still, a, he's still a rookie. Yeah, I love this kid. I uh, do let too. me not stress this. We all love him. But now, especially all the vultures out there that hate the physical side of hockey, that don't want fighting, that don't want hits like this, and there's no room for this hit that Matt Rempe did. Kid, I love the way you play. Finish your checks like the updog did, but don't be sticking out your fucking arm like that. However, they make a big trade. Like I said, he's a rookie coming into MSG. You got to go on, buddy. Yeah. You got to fight him. And then that's it. You don't have to fight him. You don't have to fight him the rest of the time if you don't want to. You don't have to. You fight him once in your barn, and then you're done. And I just thought for everything that this kid has done great, I think if you asked him deep down right now if he could go back and just would have fought him off the get-go, I think he would have. It's easy for me to say sitting on my couch, hung cheese. But as an old pro guy, up dog, I, I do think he made a mistake. But I love this kid. He'll yeah. bounce back. Georgie, go easy on him. Go easy on him. I, I, listen, and I think his coach or his teammates probably had something to say at the start of the game. Like, hey, by the way, this guy's going to chase you around, but fucking do it on your time. We don't need to. You know what? Fuck them. They're chasing us. Yeah. I, I just think there was more to, to play in than him saying no off the start. But I, I get where you're coming from, Obes. You played the game the right way, the hard way. Uh, you know more than anyone, especially anyone listening to this podcast. So, you know, we're just we're pulling for him. We're also pulling for him to keep his elbows in yeah. because we want him on the ice, and that's you know better for the NHL. People are show, showing up to watch this kid play. Yeah, there's no room for that hit, kid. Learn from it. Uh, listen, he's gonna have to fight him eventually. Here, they they they, they, they yeah. traded for him to come in and fight him. So all I'm saying, like if I'm a veteran kid in that room, I would have been, hey kid, come here. They brought this big meat stick in. My advice to you is get get it right away. Get the boys going. Get it over with. Get, go get them. Get them. You got them. Trust me. You're six eight. Use your reach. Let's go, and then we'll win this hockey game. Now it's going to be it's more of a circus, especially in New York City. I don't know. I just think yeah. I think we'll see how it plays out. But Reppy, still love you at missing curfew. Up dog, back up the Brinks truck. Beep 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 beep. beep, beep. Listen, I love these two signings. Fors, Forsling and for the Panthers, eight years, forty six million. Paul Maurice is such a beauty. There was a picture of Forsling either holding his baby or somebody's baby. I'm assuming it was his. And Paul Maurice is like, that's what coaches can do when he's out on the ice defensively. I can have a nap because I'm not even worried about him. 
I'm like, that could be the <laughs> ultimate compliment. Uh, and then the tough kid, up dog. How do you say that name there, fella? Help me out, eh, bud? Gadjevic. Gadjevic. I love this kid. Gadovic. I love this kid. Two years, seven seventy-five. Up dog. You would have loved his response. He said, "I'm living in South Florida. What else could be better than this?" Uh, these are two great signings. Uh, Forsling, they had to lock up, and this kid got rewarded for playing the right way. Up dog. So back up the Brinks truck for those fellas. Jordan Eberle, Seattle Kraken, two-year extension, nine point five. 33 years old, there was a lot of talk of him getting shipped out if they didn't get that deal done before the deadline, but this guy's well-earned. He's been he's been like a heart and soul leader for this team since they've been around three years now. 14 goals, 23 apples. He's having a season. Um, I like the deal, and I like what he's uh, I like what he's done for hockey in Seattle. I like it. About to play his Thousands game. Crazy. I think he might have over the weekend, or it's coming up real quick, but yeah. Listen, I thought Everly could have been a uh, right-handed scoring forward for a lot of teams out there, right? I, I I don't think the crack can get in. If I was a GM, I would have been calling him for about this guy, but good for him. He likes it there. He will stay there. Uh, last but not least, up dog, around the National League, my man. And I got to talk about my boy, John Tortorella. I don't know what he did to his thumb. He's got thumb surgery or something. You see his hands all yeah, backed up. Yeah, thumb. Maybe it's a vacation. What's he doing, Torts? Maybe he went up to Aspen and fell down. That's like the skier thumb. I had that surgery. Yeah, he's got Yeah, that's just what he's got. He just You just got to just tuck her in there for the next yeah. six weeks. I'd like to ask Torts why he doesn't wear a suit and tie anymore either. He, he, he's like, he just wears the zip up with the, fu- with the Flyers pin on there. That doesn't seem like a John Tortorella move for me. He's starting a new trend. Yeah. Well, here's another new trend because he fucking yeah. kicked him out of the game. He goes, he went straight Wolf of Wall Street. I'm not fucking leaving. They had to come over. They, like, he literally wasn't going to go anywhere. Uh, Big Georgie gave him two games and fined him 550K. Listen, I, I don't think he should have been suspended for it. Um, just fine him, no. But yeah. I thought it was great when he, when I he, love when he didn't want to leave, man. I love it. It's great. Uh, it's it's all time. And I love that the owner stepped out and said, we're going to take this suspension no matter what the cost is. We like our head coach. We know what he's here for. He's heart and soul. We're going to pay the fine no matter what it is. It's awesome. That's old school. Ed Snyder would be fucking love fist it. pumping from his grave for that. Yeah. That's that's completely what you do when you love your coach, you love your team. How about the Kyle Clifford thing? You, can I, I loved it. I just want to say one thing about a coach yes, before please. you move on. You, you, a coach should get kicked out at least once a year. At least. Yeah. At least once a year. Especially in the dog days. Yeah. Like you need to. Show your, show your team that you mean business and you don't care about your cash. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Torts, good on you. I just, I'll never forget when Torts just dumped the Buffalo Wings in Buffalo. I'll never forget that, Torts. So I saw this live. I think Princey put this out there. Saturday night in the AHL, Springfield forward, Yosef Dusik, little guy, little puke, scores against the Toronto Marlies to make it 4 1 and just goes buck diddy in front of the other <laughs> bench. I mean, this little kid went down, grabbed the snow, did the old fucking salt shaker in front of him, <laughs> and it was turn the lights out. It was Kyle Clifford to speak about the wires cross. Cliffy's still playing. Listen, he jumps out there next shift and chases the guy around. And this kid had, he had no business. He turtled like I've never seen turtle before. Yeah. It was bad. Well, maybe he learned his lesson then, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This Clifford, he's, he's a scary guy. I can't believe he's still playing. Clifford. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was Good in St. Him. Louis and he was in, you know, after his days in LA. Um, but I mean, listen. A guy that you don't want to fuck with, still in the still in the AHL and just ready to knock your head off. Princey, if you could find this clip, I remember when Kyle Clifford first came in the league. I was texting me and Sheldon used to text about guys, and I'm like, "Fuck, this Kyle Clifford is a killer." But I go, "Billy, mark my words, someone's gonna fucking get this guy because he just sits in the pocket and he doesn't move his head." And Billy, I think Billy was in Chicago then, and just toe to toe, but just cut him all, like made like no nice rookie Billy. Oh yeah, yeah, Billy, Billy was tough. Billy was super tough. Sheldon so Brook Bank. Tough, yeah, yeah. Billy totally. Brook Bank. Uh, up dog, you're the man. Morgan, Kyle, thank you very much. Hall Pass Media. That was Missing Curfew. Fellas.